the rebellion may finally be here. We may finally see some kind of resistance against the empire. Uh, my name is Wallace Smith, and thank you for joining us here for another Tomorrow's World webcast. Uh, I'm going to read an article from the BBC about a uh, brave, perhaps foolhardy, uh, we'll see, a professor in Canada. The title of the article, uh, the BBC published on their website November 4th. The title is Toronto Professor Jordan Peterson takes on gender neutral pronouns. I'll just read a bit in case you haven't heard this story. It actually is more fascinating than that might seem. It says a Canadian university professor ignited controversy by refusing to use gender neutral pronouns. Is he a villain or a victim? Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a trend we see in uh, universities to be sure about these invented new pronouns. Instead of just he or she, using like Z or Zer or something because people want to reject the idea that there's only men and women. Uh, that, that somehow you can just really choose what you want to be or somehow you can be someplace along this vast spectrum. And he, this fellow's refusing. Uh, continuing the article, it says, University of Toronto professor, a psychology professor, Jordan Peterson, had enough of what he saw as a campus culture where, quote, social justice warrior, left-wing radical political activist, end quote, ran rampant. Uh, continuing, he says, uh, the article says, Dr. Peterson was especially frustrated with being asked to use alternative pronouns as requested by trans students or staff, like the singular they, that is instead of using they as a plural, using it as a singular word, uh, or z or zer, Hope I'm saying those right, I have no idea. Uh, you, that's Z-E and Z-I-R, used by some as alternatives to she or he. Uh, in his opposition, he set off a political and cultural firestorm that shows no signs of abating. At a free speech rally mid-October, he was drowned out by a white noise machine. They actually brought a white noise machine to drown out everything he was saying, ironically at a free speech rally. Uh, it says pushing and shoving broke out in the crowd. He says the lock on his office door was glued shut. Uh, briefly continuing, it also says that the University of Toronto says it has received complaints of death threats. Uh, what does it say? It doesn't say death threats here, but threats against transgender people on the campus. It says that his employers, the professor's employers, have warned that while they support his right to academic freedom and free speech, he could run afoul of the Ontario Human Rights Code and his faculty responsibilities should he refuse to use alternative pronouns when requested. Wow. Uh, on one hand, let me just say that to a certain extent, it's nice. It's nice to see some kind of push back against the, uh, the insanity that's going on. The direction our society is going in is just crazy. We're losing the very foundations of everything we should be able to take for granted in the world. Uh, that with rare exception for those who are born with, uh, with certain maladies or certain uh, conditions, there really is male and female, and it's okay to have pronouns pretty much restricted to those things. We are going in a crazy way, and this might be some glimmer of hope that people are willing to speak out on the basis or uh, in defense of what's rational. But let me also highlight, we've been going down a road of irrationality for a long, long time. We are a society that now argues it somehow makes sense, it's somehow a societal good to encourage mothers, in many cases, to actually kill the babies in their womb. When even secular ethicists, not religious, I'm not talking about a Bible or, or even a Quran or anything like that, not a religious book, when secular ethicists say that the very same reasoning that justifies being able to abort a child at any stage also would apply to children after they've been born. It's, it's moral insanity. Uh, it, it continues, increasingly we're arguing for the rights of animals as if they're the same of human beings. I don't know, maybe you're going to watch a webcast by an armadillo after this one, but that doesn't make any sense. That, that is insane. We've taken steps to normalize sexual relations outside of marriage 
back when it seemed like a small step, where has it gotten us over the decades? Now we don't even know what marriage is anymore. Can two men be in a marriage or two women? What about two men and one woman or, or two women and one man? What about three men? Frankly, I'm seeing articles increasingly, it's getting frightening about marrying robots. It's insane. I'm interested to know about how this pushback works. Because frankly, when you rob the world of godly principles, then you rob any kind of competing worldview of the foundation it needs. We're told both in the Psalms and in the Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And I don't see a worldview that still has that other than that that comes out of the Bible uh, that's going to be able to succeed in such a pushback. Uh, we're in exciting days. If you like more on this topic, I actually did a, uh, a longer program on it uh, that maybe we can show with our fancy graphics uh, called Who Says? About what really are the foundations of morality in society. Uh, I hope you'll consider it. And I do hope that you will check out everything we have available at tomorrowsworld.org.